Nobody's going to be expecting me to be on at this time of night. I'm sitting here in my pajamas. Just chilling. Yeah, 2020. Yo. I thought to myself, I'll get plenty time to all these decisions lying in my mind. Holding hands, I put my arms around her waist. Neither one, these two will I try in haste. But taking my time to try to convince her that there is no need for doubt. My blow wind. Ooh. Dun, dun, dun. That heat wave album was crazy back in the day. Mind blowing decision. Some of y'all didn't even knew that. Y'all didn't even know that. Y'all did not know that's because I was singing it. But y'all probably knew if somebody else was singing it. But listen here. I've been wanting to talk to y'all since yesterday, but you know, I couldn't, I was busy, <laughs> but never too busy for y'all, man. So this is a couple of things I just want to uh, say to y'all. The first thing I want to say is like, check this out. If it's two men that are arguing, and a man is looking at them from afar, or a woman, they don't know who the fool is. So I decided that I'm not gonna argue with nobody because I know what I have, I know what I do. And once you read my book, you will understand that they don't do it like me. They're not like me. You said, you said Queen Lotus, it caused his head on collision. <laughs> Makahulu Blue. All right. So I'm going to be quick with this, y'all, with this show. But I want y'all to understand two things. Is that me as a security personnel, I take head almost for hey, I was gonna say head counts, but uh no ditty. I count the people who I should be looking at. I still got my principal. My principal is first, but I want to know who's in the crowd with us at all times. I want to know who is right there with us at all times. If y'all remember, if y'all seen Raw Deal 1, 2, and 3, I said this. I said, we had 23 of us when we went through that door. And only 11 of us came out together. The other 12 people had went to Steve Stout's house. They left us there at the Peterson Museum. So I'm taking y'all back to the Peterson Museum because I said it was 11 us. G Money, Little C's, D Rock, the cop from Inglewood. Paul, Stevie, Stevie, J, uh, Lou, the, uh, he's the, um, he was Puff Stylist, Lou, Kenny, Big, Puff, and myself, this guy here. That's the 11 people that was walking out of 
the Peterson Museum. I then left them. When Big started walking, I left them and put both of the cars in front of the door. So I'm thinking that we was gonna jump in the car and leave. Now, Charlie Baltimore wasn't there. No, 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 no. I'm not gonna read that, y'all. Let me get through this. But I am gonna say Libra Queen is in the house and Kim Offered in the house and Monique Irving and Leo, those people. Reggie, Reg, Reg, what up with your boy, boy? OG Patrice, those people are members and everything. I'm gonna get to y'all who ain't members. Y'all just gotta wait. Anyway, so now I went downstairs. It's, you know, you gotta go down, escalate and everything like that, but I ran down the steps. Um, Got the cars, came back up, and started walking big out. I did not see Russell Simmons. I know who Russell Simmons is. Now, he could have talked to Big while he was walking towards his car, walking to the car in the Peterson Museum. But Russell Simmons did not take that 30, that 15 to 30 minute walk from what, cause big legs was fucked up and he was taking his time. He did not walk with big to his car. He may have spoke to big when I ran to get the cars and brought them to the front door, but he did not walk big to his car. I know it may not mean much, but all these years, you never heard Russell Simmons do any of his interviews said that, oh, well, I walked big to his car the night he got murdered. Or, uh, I, you know, talked to big because he didn't talk to him when I was over there. When I was there, I, I didn't see him. And I know Russell Simmons. I remember Russell Simmons all the way back when I didn't know Russell Simmons when I went to his house to get some credit cards for a party that they was giving for Heavy D at the California club. I would never forget Russell Simmons. After that night, and then plus, anytime Russell came to Puff's party, Puff said, if that nigga ain't dressed right, Gene, leave him outside and make, uh, uh, leave him outside and get somebody to come get me and I'll bring him inside. Yo, all the promoters, other security, other clubs and stuff like that, they would try to get him in the party and stuff like that. And I was like, my man, he cannot come in the party. I'm letting y'all know that. Yeah, it was Russell Simmons. I said, he cannot come in the party. Puff gave me direct orders that if Russell Simmons, Steve Stout, and Chris Lighting come to the party and they not fly, they not dress right, make them stay outside and have somebody come get me and I want to come and get them. Don't know why, rest in peace, Lamont, Riz, Gertie, all day, every day. You know what I'm saying? I got, I got, yo, Riz was a real, Riz was one of the real ones. Rewrite the title? No, I'm not rewriting the title. Not at all. You, you, you'll get what I'm talking about. I think you'll get what I'm talking about. What's the title? Let me see that I write it right, because it's late. <laughs> the Queen Lotus 126. Hey, Queen, Queen Lotus. Kim Offer. So now, Russell Simmons, when I first met him, it was back at his apartment that was over Tower Records in the village. Me and my man Slick went there. 
Russell Simmons, we rang his bell. He came to the door with no shirt on. Like he had just came out the shower, had a bottle of cologne in his hand, putting cologne on. He said, we're here to see Russell Simmons. He said, yeah, come on. I'm going to take you where you at. He told us to go in this room. We went in this room. It was the dude laying in the bed with some bikini, black silk sheets with some bikini leopard drawers on. On the phone with a real zesty voice. I've told this story before with a real zesty voice. Yo. Me and my man Slick looked at each other and said, yo, what the fuck is this, man? Yo, yo, you Russell Simmons? And he, he put the phone down. First, he just stayed like we wasn't even there. So he put the phone down. So he said, who y'all want? Slick said, oh, nah. Pulled out the three, for, this is over 30 years ago, so pulled out the three, five, seven. <laughs> yo, Slick wasn't playing no okay. I was like, yo, he said, yo, what the fuck is this? I said, I don't know. <laughs> the dude started hollering and screaming, Russell! Russell! <laughs> Russell Simmons runs back in the room. He runs back and he said, yo, man, I'm Russell Simmons. Come follow me. We goes back in the living room. Cocaine, well, we came through the, we go back in the room because we ain't pay attention to that at first when we came in. It's cocaine and weed all on the table in a bowl and all like that, weed and cocaine. Allegedly, it looked like weed, it looked like cocaine back then. So now, it's a bunch of zesty fellas upstairs because he had a, he was in a penthouse and it was some spiral steps that went upstairs to what appeared to probably be a kitchen. And these guys started looking down at us. I can't believe, I can't believe y'all didn't know who Russell Simmons is. Russell Simmons is rich. He's, he's so rich. Take those credit cards. Y'all can do whatever y'all. They would start talking like that. My man said, was like, Yo, man, let's get the fuck out of here before I shoot this shit up. <laughs> That's the night of Heavy D birthday party. I got a picture of that too. Hold on, let me see. I'm sorry, y'all. I just I I tell these stories off the top of my head, and so I know everybody else. You got you got people that could put that shit up online, and you could have the you could have it and everything like that, but. Not Big Gene. <laughs> Big Gene don't have it like that. Let's see if I can find the picture. One second, y'all. I'm sorry about that. Just apologize. Man. Let's see. I got some pictures that the uh, uh, people want. I got a lot of pictures, bro. Anybody who got my book, I just put a few pictures in. Uh, it's not directly in the book. You go to a QR code. I thought of some slick shit because they charged me for that one picture I put in the front of the book of myself in a... Uh, with the QR code, I got charged extra for that when I put that in there. So I wasn't paying for the book like that. Whereas that I was going to put all those, I was going to put all those uh, pictures in the book because it's extra money for that. And some people don't want to pay for the book. No way. <laughs> Say like, yo, listen to me. I'm, I, I thought, I said, okay, let me do this. Let me just put a QR code in the book. Let me put a QR code in the book. And uh, do it that way. 
So that's what I did. And you go straight to some pictures. I'm trying to find this uh, thing for you guys. Queen Cancer Tarot. Gene, I was watching my own show and I left to come here and chill with you. Ooh, oh, Queen Mama. Thank you. Man, I gotta find this picture. Did you, y'all? I, I want y'all to see this picture. This picture is cool. This was a heavy. I, I, I probably already showed it to y'all though. For some of you guys, you know, I'm getting a lot of new people that's coming in. Yeah, that same gang, same gang. DB, DBJ, y'all seen that? Same gang, same gang. Puff. Oh, here you go. This was at Heavy D's birthday party. Eddie F. Puffy, Mike, Tim Dog. That me right there. This guy here. This is a Heavy D's birthday party at the California Club. So I know Russell Simmons real well. I know Russell Simmons too well. I know Russell Simmons just like, like I know Sada Moore. Asada Moore. Asada Moore is a member, y'all. Asada Moore. Asada Moore. Yeah, Asada Moore is a member, y'all. Go. Asada Moore. Yeah, Asada Moore. Asada Moore is a member, y'all. Thank you for your membership. Asada Moore. Asada Moore. <laughs> y'all remember that? Asada Moore. And the Golden Child with Eddie, with Eddie Murphy. Hold on. She going to talk about. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. It's pronounced Sade. 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 Well, you should have spelt it that way. Sade. <laughs> I'm just. Sade. I'm just joking. I'm just joking, mama. I appreciate you. Sade. Sada more. Sada more. Sada more is <laughs> Sade more. Sade more. <laughs> I'm just messing with you. <laughs> yeah. So I know Russell Simmons real well. And he, if he would have left with us, I wouldn't have say 11 of us left out together because I would have counted Russell Simmons and said 12 of us left out together. Russell Simmons, because it would have been a big part of that because he was such a huge personality and a person back then. I would not have missed the fact that Russell Simmons walked out with us. Cut this phone off. This dude is just. Let's see right here. You know what I mean? I wouldn't have missed that up. Nana Borky. Thank you. You know where that, that name come from, right? I hope it's Nene and not Nana. Oh, Nana. Look that up. <laughs> Could somebody tell her what that name Nana is all about? It's deep, too. Anyway. I wouldn't have never messed that. Somebody give me back the title because I didn't write it down. I just did it off the top of my head about what I was going to talk about. Can somebody, you know, 
Do anybody got my new book? Do anybody in the chat got my new book yet? Be honest. Mo is in here. Hey, Mo. What up, Mama? How you doing, Mo Mo L? Mm, 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 mm. Miss Ra, Miss Ra, Corey Grant, what's good with you? Yo, Bigum them had, yo, Bigum is doing that interview with Bigum. Them, that was one of the best. They was, they was educated on Gene Deal. They knew a lot about. They did their homework, bro. We didn't have enough time for that, but they did their homework. They took me back to the projects when I used to do the security at Lambert House and Tainu Towers, uh, East Chester House. They they knew Gene. They knew history on Gene Deal, because you know Bigum, you know was in the streets like that well, you know but he knew people in the security he knew people around you understand so they did their homework that was one of the best interviews that i think i've ever did with anybody thank you for the cash up antonio rodriguez big who shot you yes the book is on kindle Anybody get a chance to read any of the um of my book? Nah, uh uh Shay. Shay, nah. Mint auntie, nah nah me auntie. Nah, it goes back deeper than that. You might they may say that. But Nana is a demonic entity. Sorry, I'm just the name. Don Abercumbry. Tiana Marie. I knew a Tiana Marie. Used to like her too. You know, we, we used to be crazy about those girls with those hazel eyes and all that. They don't be no good. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm steepy. <laughs> Kimberly Freeman, what's going on? Yeah. Girls with those pretty eyes always get away with stuff. You know, you wanna, you wanna be close to them. You wanna be with them. And let me get back to the subject at hand. So I knew Russell Simmons personally. I've been around Russell Simmons a few times, as far as in the party type situation. Out and about when Puff was meeting with him or, or whatever. Do anybody remember the China Club? Because he used to love to be up in the China Club. Do anybody remember the China Club? on uh, Columbus and 70th Street like that? Now, people here from New York, right? Do I got some people in New York who used to run to go to the China Club? Tasha says she waiting for her book. Chris Collins. Adam Sanchez, we do not do shout outs on my program. So you sitting up there telling me to shout you out and everything, bro. I'm not even going to mention your name. Adam Sanchez, we don't do that here. You got to find someplace else to go, bro. I'm sorry about that. 
Plus, you don't catch. <laughs> Chanel, 312. Mo. All right. Oh, Yo, the real deal, do you got the second book? Hey, Keisha Renee. Oh, shit, I messed up the title. Thank you, my man. A title supposed to be Notorious Had to Know. That's what it said when I was ty typing. And what Gene Deal remember about Russell Simmons. So I'm going to change the title. Thank you, brother. It's supposed, the title's supposed to read Notorious, The Notorious Had to Know. What And what Gene Deal Gene Deal, what you remember about Russell Simmons, what I remember about Russell Simmons. Damn, I'm sleepy. <laughs> I'm going to change the title, y'all. Thank you. Some guy was, I'll just chew them out. I'm like, I ain't changing the title. Get out of here. What are you talking about? See what happens when you're wrong? Buttercup lady said they're getting it, the thing tomorrow. Well, you might be getting the book tomorrow, bought a cup lady, but long gone, a long gone, a long gone is a member, y'all. Hey, a long gone, yeah, long gone, a long gone is a member, y'all. A long gone, a long gone, a long gone is a member, y'all. Thank you for your membership, long gone. Man, I don't care. I'm at home chilling. I'm at home chilling in the PJs. You know what I mean? And when I leave from doing this, I'm going to sleep. But I want to finish telling this. Did the notorious big, did he really know that giving Puff the name Diddy, he would run with that name and he would become one of the laughing stock of hip hop. Did the notorious big know by calling him Diddy that name will become the laughing stock of hip hop? Like you know, it's bad enough the brother name got name was Puffy. That's a little zesty. You understand? Long well, gone. Salute to that. Appreciate you. Abby K. What up, Abby K? Yo, let me put y'all cash up there because you know that what you call take a third of whatever y'all give me. <laughs> y'all don't know if y'all. Yeah, hey, they think, and then they make me pay taxes on it. I know people don't complain about it, but it is what it is. Big G, my house got destroyed here in Atlanta, but I salute original St. Louis player as you. Oh, let's hope. Salute, salute, salute. All right. So now, check this out. Do anybody, I know y'all don't want to hear this story over, but I do really want to tell it. But if y'all really want to hear it, can I just get 10 people to say, yo, Gene, I don't mind. And uh, uh, this is about Lil' Kim, and this is a night that Diddy and uh, Puffy and Big got into it. You know what I'm saying? And how that name came about. If y'all already know it, I could just skip it. You know what I'm saying? Yo, Jay Roo said, the laughing stock of the world. <laughs> Chanel 312. <laughs> yo, Jay Roo said the laughing stock of the world. Yo, I see some, yo, that's that's the side of rap. What's that? The Sadarata. The Sadarata. The Sadarata. What up, the Sadarata? Is that how you say it? Break it down in syllables. The Sadarata. The Sadarata. The Sadarata. The Sadarata. Leave a queen. I don't know shit. Get a real name. No. 
Nobody minds. I don't mind. Dion, what up with you, boy? I got you. When the books come in, Dion, I'm going to send your book, Dion. I know you won the book last time. You won a book, Dion. Okay, Dion, I got you, Dion. I'm not going to forget. I wrote it down, Dion. <laughs> That's my homeboy from the loop. I'm, I'm just fucking with you, Dion. <laughs> Damn, Gene, you ain't got to blow me up like that, bro. All right. So then uh, me, um, we was in the studio. This the this right after Charlie Baltimore and Big had got into an incident. If y'all didn't know, he had said it on all the dialogue that um uh her and Big got a fight. She threw his Rolex and his ring out the window. You understand? Because Big had a bag of all his freak off sessions. He had told little C's to take it down to his room. Lil C's didn't take it down to his room and left the bag in there. And like Chick saw, they nosy. They real nosy. Did, nobody was in here from the China Club, right? Because I asked that earlier before I start telling this, start this story. Let me, this might make y'all remember. Remember this wall at the China Club? That's the wall that was at the China Club. One day. Do anybody remember that wall at the China Club? All right. Gene, you just want to show that picture. <laughs> No, I really want to do it because Russell Simmons used to stay. He used to come. To, Russell Simmons used to come to the China Club. All of them used to come in the China Club. And you, you have um, remember Dave Chappelle told that story. He was talking about the China Club when he, when he said that Rick James was in there. Pretty Nikki said she remembered. Thank you, Pretty Nikki. What's good? Fat Joe used to host parties there. The China Club, yeah, in New York. The China Club in New York. Oh, shit. Somebody read my book. Hold on. You say, the second book, great. Jay-Z, no security. Mark, Mary, give them for, oh, my God. No, 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 no. Mike did that, bro. Mike did that. We didn't form Slick and the Family in 89. Slick and the Family did not form in 89. Same Gang formed in 89. When I left Same Gang, that's when Slick and the Family formed. All right? So you can't put that real deal. You can't put that out there. Same Gang started in 89. Same gang had a run for about a one and a, half, or a year and a half. I officially started slicking the family in 90, in the 90 going into 91. Thank you very much. It was me and Slick's birthday party, October of 90. Mike did that on purpose, put 91. He tried to get same gang a two year run on the back of the book. But it's okay. I didn't have a problem with it. I just told him that from the uh, from the book, you know, somebody because I want to know has somebody read was somebody reading the book. No, I didn't stop cook, uh, cooking. Not at all. Not at all. I just got to get somebody to eat my food, and uh, I'm doing a show soon uh, this Sunday, so I'll be doing a cooking show too. Um, Cause I'm inviting unique over so we can eat. Uh, so we can eat dinner in my basement. <laughs> Woo. We had dinner in my basement. <laughs> unique for Mecca audio. He been in my house. 
been all through my house. Um, anyway, who's that right there? Let me see. K. Long gone. Thank you for that. Appreciate you for that super chat. Let's hope right there too. Got to get these people in. You got to look in your description to become a member. So now getting back. So we in the studio, Charlie Baltimore and threw big stuff out the window. You know, say, so now it's makeup time. Puff promised her that she can get on some, uh, what you call those skits. They was doing skits for Puff album and for Big album. So Charlie Baltimore was going to do skits for the album. You understand? Because she was she was leaving. She wasn't there when Big got killed. I thought she was there because she had some guys from Philly who was rolling with us. And I actually thought that she was in the car with them, but she wasn't. You understand? Shout out to those dudes from Philly. I heard one of them had passed away. And uh, one of them may be some kin to one of my moderators. Hey, Tamika Jameson. So now, uh, they in the studio. Big had told me how he had wrote Little Kim's stuff. Big had told me how he wrote Little Kim's stuff and that um, he was getting a whole new junior mafia. He just gave me, he, he was just telling me all kinds of information, you know, regarding his life. Uh, this was. I'm trying to remember. This is when uh, Puff and D Rock had, we were shooting a uh, hypnotized video too. And Puff and D Rock had went out with uh, Sally Richardson, her stylist, and they, they, they was gone all day. They had left me and Big in the Winnebago and D-Rock Big's man wasn't be wasn't nowhere to be found and Lil C's was on punishment. So me and Big just stayed in the Winnebago just talking about business. I was telling them about how niggas in the streets was talking bad about him. How you know like, you know, that Big owed him money and shit. Because his dude Mike Gadget had old, he had did uh Big's car, and he was telling my man how yo that nigga owed me like thirty thousand, thirty or sixty thousand, something like that, because he was putting drop boxes in all Big's car, and the systems. Now, uh, Mike did time for that, so that's old news and stuff. That shit is, um. It was a federal crime. Some guys in Virginia on or, or snitched on him in the whole nine yards. So he did like 30 years for that. Putting those drop boxes in people's cars. And that's crazy. So prior to Puff and uh, Big getting into it, me and D-Rock was talking in the back of the studio. And I was telling D-Rock, yo, listen to me. You got to stay away from Puff, man. He trying to get big to this party and shit like this. Don't come nowhere we at, bro. I'm telling y'all. I got a big feeling. I'm telling, this is what I'm telling D-Rock. Big's number one man. You understand? D-Rock shaking my hand. Yeah, all right, Gene, you cool, stuff like that. I knew Puff had took this nigga out. You understand? But I'm telling D-Rock, bro. If you go and watch the biblical betrayal of Biggie Smalls, you understand where I'm coming from. I'm telling them. But D-Rock, for some reason, I found this out 20, 30 some years later. Because I knew it was him that got him there. But I wasn't. 
I ain't have no concrete evidence until Clark Kent went on Matt Hoffa's show and he said, I spoke to Big the night he got killed. I was at his hotel room. Big asked me to go to London with him. You understand? He, I told, I called my boss. I spoke with my boss, and he said, "Yeah, go ahead, get that money." Clark Kent at the time was the vice president of Motown, I think. So now, he's going to go with Big because that was going to be a big tour in London. Big would have came back a, a mega star. He wouldn't have been with Bad Boy because he was leaving Bad Boy. But he would have been a megastar. So now what happened was this. Clark Kent said on that show that Big told him, man, I'm going to this party at the museum shit, uh, D-Rock and Puff setting this shit up for me to go. I had a long conversation. Me and D-Rock had a conversation. In the interim of that conversation, back then I used to smoke cigarettes. We called them L. I know this one cat in California was like, yo, we thought you was on the, on the, we call L like, uh, what they call it, uh, angel dust or something like that, like that. That's what they call L's and stuff like that. I said, no, we used to call like, yo, give me L. We was cool. Back in the day, cool in with L. That used to be the cigarettes, but now we smoking Newports. You understand? So, yo, let me get let me, let me get hit off that L or whatever. Like that. He thought I was smoking wool or whatever like that, but no, nigga, we smoking cigarettes. D Rock also was smoking weed. When D Rock passed the weed to me, I thought it was the L. And then, but D Rock said, "Yo, Gene, I thought that was the I thought that was the cigarette." D Rock was like, "Gene, that's that's weed." I said. I don't give a fuck what it is, man. I'm telling you, bro, don't do this to like that. He was like, all right, cool. So then, and I said, by the way, D-Rock, listen, don't say nothing to nobody that I took a hit off the weed with you. That's what I told him. Now, I ain't going to tell you nothing. Gave me his hand. I ain't going to say nothing. So now, it wasn't 10 minutes before I went back in the studio and Puff came in and Big was leaning back in the chair, rolling his own weed because Lil C's wasn't around to do it. He's still on punishment. Him and Charlie Baltimore right there. And he and Big, he always try to be funny and shit like that. So he was like, yo, Puff, I need some more security, bro. I need security, bro. And Puff was like, yo, I got Gene here with you, dog. I ain't even got security. I went with Kenny. I left Gene here with you. And he was like, man, I need more security. Gene is back here blowing, uh, smoking weed with D-Rock. Yo, I was like, no, this motherfucker didn't. It ain't been 10 minutes and this nigga done told Big this bullshit. I was like, wow. So then he said, Puff, like, I don't believe that shit. I don't believe it. He said, yo, Gene, you smoking weed with D-Rock? I said, I don't know what he talking about. I asked D-Rock. D-Rock said word to some dude that was that just got killed in North Carolina that was Big's the man. I'm like, Puff like, I don't believe that shit. I said, my man, I ain't asking you niggas ain't gonna question me about nothing. I said, so big, since you wanna run your motherfucking mouth, tell Puff how you wrote Lil' Kim shit and all that Junior Mafia shit. That nigga, I, one eye went that way, the other eye went that way, and he was like, oh, yeah. I said, yo, tell him that. And I look him as your bitch in that, uh, you know, you ain't got to worry about nothing. She going to make sure you're good. Did you tell him that? Puff was like, yo, he better not say that. Yo, look him, say it. Tell me. Puff was all in that nigga grill. Tell me, big. Tell me. You wrote it? You wrote it? 
B was like, I ain't writing. I don't know what Gene talking about. I said, you ain't tell me you wrote a little Kim shit, bro? He said, he said, yeah. say it now, Big. Say it. I want you to say it. Say you wrote it. And then Big just started saying, no, Diddy. No, Diddy. No, Diddy. And I was like, oh, shit. I knew who Diddy was, right? I knew who Diddy was. So then he said, oh, Diddy, oh, Diddy. So uh, uh, Big starts smoking his weed and everything like that. And Puff left out. I said, yeah, easy thing to do is to mind your own motherfucking business, right? And so then me and Big, uh, I said, yeah, next time, you know what I'm saying? You won't be talking shit in D-Rock, you snake bastard. You understand? Uh, Talking about you wasn't going to say nothing. Oh, that's my man. That's my man. I said, yeah, all right. So now, when Puff left out, I say, so, you know, if he's Diddy, that means you're a donkey? Motherfucker, I know who you was talking about. I got to the end of Donkey Kong. Donkey Kong, it was a game that you play. And at the end, if you get to the end, Diddy Kong can't start running out. Diddy Kong will start running out. That was Donkey Kong nephew. People thought that was his sidekick, but it was actually his nephew. Right? So now, this is the thing. Big gave him that name. Big Toad was calling him Diddy. But Big was being facetious as fuck because he's calling him a little monkey. He turns around and about a year or two after Big dead died and he had caught another case, I think in North Carolina or somewhere, stuff like that. He said he's changing his name to Diddy. He changing his name to the little monkey that Big was calling him. So now, by him doing that, Big got to be turning over in his grave laughing that now this nigga is the laughing stock. Like my man just said of the world, that people are taking that ditty and running all kinds of shit behind it, making motherfuckers laugh about this cat. Big did that shit from the grave, y'all. I know somebody say, yo, Gene is reaching. It's far-fetched. But how is it that he was calling him a little monkey back then? And today, this nigga is going through ape shit. Hey, Tamika Jameson. Yvonne Aaron. Chanel 312. What's going on? Let me see what's going on. Forever, Decayla. Hi, forever, Decayla. Forever, my lady. <laughs> it's like a dream. Lisa, Lisa M. Hmm. Maybe I'm reaching y'all, but the shit is funny to me. Ryan, Ryan, Ryan uh, Rose, he had just came, he a PhD. He just came a member last week and he back on here today. I thought the PhD was like, uh, I'll just give this guy a shot. You know, I'll just come on this one time, you know, nothing, just, you know, you got my PhD. I really don't listen to this hip hop thing like that. It's, it's it's really not me, 
But uh, something about this guy, I'm going to give him a shot and everything like that. Because um, I'm Ryan Rose with the PhD. <laughs> Ryan, Ryan, don't take your membership away, bro. I'm just fucking with you, Ryan. I, I'm stupid like that, bro. I, I, I don't have a PhD. Polo Family TV, what's good with you? Hi, Tommy. Hara. Hi, Hatoma. Hi, Tommy. You speak Mandolin or you speak Cantonese? Neither? Hi, Tommy Honda. You speak Cantonese or... You hear that from Dr. Rose? Doc, you see what Dr. Rose? No one's afraid of Diddy. Who his family knew is what they were afraid of. Not who his family knew. You know what I'm saying? You have to, uh, let me just, let me just say something to y'all. You read the second book all right, ready to truth? The second book is great, Gene. I, somebody who was on page uh, 72 just told me, he said, yo, I can't put this shit down, Gene. This shit is incredible. He said, he said Gene, I can't put this shit down. This shit is incredible, brother. So now, y'all have to understand that the music industry, whether y'all want to believe it or not, is ran by the mob. And if y'all don't believe that there was a If y'all don't believe that, y'all crazy. The music industry has always been ran by the mob. Edwards Daniels. Do you know anything about that, sir? Maya Lansky, who was one of the top gangsters back in the day, he told Lefty Luke was it Lefty Luciano that yo, we're gonna hire, we're gonna take the the business part like all the business company the uh uh sanitation uh the offices the the uh, the local unions the music business you understand the movie business we're gonna take control of that y'all got all the stuff in the streets and everything lucky luciano So they was gangsters. 
Now, if they couldn't get their money or if they, they wanted something straight now, they'll call their Italian mob friends now who had people like Bumpy Johnson that they was cool with them. If they want something done to a black artist or want, want them to be straightened out, they would do it in that way. But the mob has always ran the music business. Now, you might want to call them gatekeepers that they put in charge. And all those years, Mr. Clarence Avant was the HNIC. Will somebody let them know what that means? Because some of these guys are too young to know. Can somebody tell them who that is, please, on the channel? The HNIC. Mr. Edwards, thank you. When Puff had to get out of Cali, Andre Harrell called Andre Harrell called Clarence Avon. You know, you just can't fly out without a 24 hour notice to the air traffic controller, let them know, get a pathway the whole nine yards. They did that shit in a matter of two hours. Who y'all playing with? Worldwide know what I'm talking about. Bill Blast Ingram knew what I'm talking about. Shout out to Bill Blast Ingram and his membership. Justin Ewan. They just found, listen to me. They ain't doing nothing about that private nine. They just found uh, 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 tunnels in this Jewish synagogue going under the city. You know what they did? They was exposed the next day without doing any kind of investigation of what was in those tunnels, what it led to and stuff like that. They went in and the city and they what you call cemented the shit down. It could have been bodies. It could have been little kids that was down there before Allegedly. There was no investigation. Nobody went down on the scene. What was down in those tunnels and all that stuff like that. They just closed them off. Moses Hannon, I'm just going to take this as you being young. Yeah, he was the head nigga in charge, bruh. If he was head of all the niggas. Come on, bro. We smarter than that. No diddy. Stacy serious. Stay stay so serious. 
Yeah. Head nigga in charge. No diddy. Yo. They was about to give Puff that position. They was about to give Puff that position. He was so envious of Tupac. He was so envious of Tupac that he caught the spirit and he tried to grab the spirit of Pop by going to the Grammys and saying the same speech that Pac had said before. And then he gonna bite the hand and fed him with Deleon or Diego, whatever they, that liquor company name was. So now he done done all this shit and they said, we can't use this nigga. This nigga is crazy. What we can do, we can say this. A key teller. A key teller. A key teller is a member, y'all. Oh, key teller. A key teller. A key teller is a member, y'all. Go. A key teller. A key teller. A key teller is a member, y'all. Yo, Keith, thanks for your membership. I really appreciate it, brother. Salute. He had a good name, Keith Teller. Real name. A brother probably moved in his 40s, 30s, 40s, something like that. His name ain't Keith Abdul Rahim Aman Allah Baba Teller. His name was Keith Teller. Keith Teller. A keep teller is a member, y'all. Oh, keep teller. A keep teller. A keep teller is a member, y'all. <laughs> Salute, keep again. So now they was going to make pump this dude. He getting up here. He's biting the hand to feed him. Like, no, we can't use him. Nah, we racist. Yeah, we allegedly may be racist. They be like, oh, cut that nigga YouTube channel off. <laughs> Hold on, somebody says something. Look at that. Just imagine what big. Love you, Gene. Excellent, Tracy. Love you, Gene. Love you too, Tracy. Excellent, Tracy. Love you too. <laughs> that nigga is crazy. Tasha. Tamika. Just imagine what big was. I'm just reading a couple of things. I'm sorry about that. Can't wait. TKB back. Can't wait to meet make all your show. All right. Um, they, yeah, have, have Kim Glass. Like, you know, everybody telling me, yo, this nigga talk too much, this nigga stuff like this thing. This is what I live, and I'm telling the stories and the stuff that I know. You ain't got to listen. If people think I talk too much and everything like that, so fucking what you ain't got to listen. It's a lot of shit that's going to, it's motherfuckers talking something, and none of they shit is real. None of that shit is true. That shit is felonious. They wasn't there. They didn't hear it. And if, if it's second, some of the information is third, second, third hand information, and they don't even know. 
They don't even know. Mr. Clarence Avon flew that nigga out of San Diego within two to three hours when Von Big was killed. That don't happen. Unless you got power. Puff was about to have that kind of power and it went to his... Y'all see what it did? Heavy is the crown. Yo, Jim, I thought we was cool, man. You trying to get me killed? I thought we was all right, Jim. Definitely don't want that. DJ, all the way from Djibouti, Africa. I want free. I want free. I also want Dorica Johnson, a Johnson, a Miss Johnson is a member, y'all. Oh, Dorica Johnson, Dorica Johnson, a Miss Johnson is a member, y'all. Oh, Dorica Johnson, a Dorica Johnson. Dorica Johnson is a member, y'all. Thank you for your membership, Miss Dorica Johnson. Man, be all in her ear. Rika, come on, Rika. Stop it, baby. Man, be all in her ear. Dorica, come on now, baby. Please. Please, baby. She got that kind of name. She have a nigga begging. Dorica, come on, stop it. Baby, please. Nigga don't know what to say sometimes. Be like, Re, Rika, Rika, come on. Come on, Rika, stop. Come on, Rika, please. Please, please, Dorika. D, D. Nigga, say my name right. Dorika Johnson. Dorika Johnson. Dorika Johnson is a member, y'all. <laughs> I do this the way I do this because I like to have fun. What is it? Trash World. Trashy World. MG. Toke. I'm doing good, Renee. Yo. Sherry Sh S, why I'm like this? This is why I'm like this. Because I know that. And listen to this, y'all. I know God wants you to have the best of everything. You might not get it all. You may not get it when you want it. But it's out there for you to have. I don't worry about shit like I used to because I know I put it in his hands. I was just telling a friend today, you can't tell me you believe in God if you're worrying, because when you worry, you're thinking about what the devil is doing. You're not thinking about what God is doing for you. If you give it to God and let it go, and all you got to do is thank him. All you got to do is thank him. Things ain't always going to be right. But I'm, I'm happy most of the time. I might get on these these dudes' head and talk shit right there, but after I get through talking that shit, I'm good. I'm all right. I've always been like that. People that know me, I've always been high sprung. I've always been the dude that I fight for what I love. You know, people come on here and want other people to believe that 
I would let Puff do some shit to a kid or I would let Puff beat a woman or I would let Puff do something like that. No. Puff, no other nigga. No other man. No other dude, no other man. I used to be so effed up. And it's not messed up. My brothers and will sit here and tell you. I call my brother up. Yo. This dude was smacking his girl up in the club. I went over to him like a gentleman. Yo, my man. Don't do that to your girl. You know, don't do that to your girl out here in front of everybody. Man, mind yo. Pow. Slap the shit out of him. Soon as he, soon as he gave me that attitude, that's what I gave him. Now what, nigga? Do me like you're doing her. Yo, uh, I'm going to set it up for all the people who got a copy of my book. I hope y'all are going to be members because I'm going to do a member show. We're going to talk about the first book and the people who got the second book. And I'm going to stay on here with y'all. You know, it's like going to be like a book club. I got to do that, man. Because for somebody like me to articulate my feelings and articulate my thoughts into something that is, I want to say, My books are going to be a hip hop legend. I'm a, I'm a, I'm gonna just say that right now. It's it's art. It's like somebody will go back and say, "Yo, his first two albums was dope." People are going to go back in history and say, "Yo, Big Gene first two books and the third one cuz I'm star I've already started on the third one is going to be dope." Jason Matt. I don't have no thoughts on Diddy and Mary J. Blige. Oh, and oh, thank you for that. But I'm good. I got to put the other book up there now, too. I'll do that tomorrow when I'm creating a banner. I'll fix this later. You can get both books on Amazon now. You can get both books on Amazon. But anyway, y'all, I know it's late. It's 11 o'clock. I want to thank y'all. But give some thought about that, bro. I really believe that somewhere, because Big was before his time, and Big was a genius. I remember when he was doing, uh, I was in the studio when they were doing his bone and biggie, baby, we gonna rock the party. And the dude, Puff made the dude, the dude laced the shit the first time. I don't think he could have got any better than that. I don't know it's a light skinned dude. He laced that shit the first time. And then Puff like, nah, man, I don't think. I said, I think you got something better than that inside you. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> yeah, I need you back in that booth. <laughs> so, dude, went back in there, did another verse and stuff like that. They just end up that. Puff took the first burst. Big was right there, rolling and smoking the weed and everything like that. He said, I ain't doing shit here. 
I said, man, well, stop acting like you so we could go home, bro. He said, he ain't doing nothing. Big waited and did that shit on his own. He didn't do that when they was all in the studio doing that section. He went and did it on his own. And then he flipped their fucking style and made it his style. He flipped it and made it his style. But anyway, y'all, thank y'all, man. I'm glad y'all here. It's late. I usually don't do this. It'd be a late afternoon. Uh, send y'all prayers out to uh, Miss Pleasant. Uh, she's still recovering. Uh, go to her, Miss Pleasant, 1214 Instagram, and send her well wishes. And uh, till we see each other again. Next time I won't be in my PJs. <laughs> Y'all be good. Take care. Peace. Hold on. They gonna wait to the end. Joe Pierre, salute you. Thank you, sir. Peace.